All right, guys, I'm gonna tell you about the most advanced and powerful new feature of open broadcaster software, bar none, period. It's the new tech NDI integration. Let's take a look. All right, so I'm gonna give you an introduction to IP video. This is the future of video production now integrated directly into OBS. It's pretty mind boggling. So I'm gonna go high level in this. And then the next two videos are gonna be about how to use a wireless telestrator using NDI, how to use an NDI camera. I've got one, two, three here in my studio that you guys will get the, a chance to check out and how to connect multiple OBS systems over your local area network. We'll talk about some high level networking and then hopefully in the next couple of weeks, I'm actually gonna bring out a router and a network switch and show you how to set up a multicast network. There's also a chapter about this in my book, which I will link to below. Let's get into it. All right, so what if we never had to use SDI or RS-232? Who knows what these cables are, right? SDI is tried and true. I still use it to this day. It's a completely uncompressed 3G, or it actually can go up to 4K now, uh, basically analog cable, right? Serial digital interface, but I consider both of these analog. RS-232 is a control cable for camera control. HD-SDI is a video cable. What if we never needed those anymore? What if we could replace all of those analog cables with Ethernet? Ethernet is such a better cable. All of our computers are already connected to Ethernet. Our OBS is already connected to Ethernet. It's already on a local area network because it's connected to our router, right? And uh, most routers have at least a few uh, network ports in them so that we can connect our computers, whether they're Mac, PC, Linux, whether it's a NDI device like a camera, whether it's a wireless tablet that allows us to literally directly into OBS, annotate an alpha channel layer into, so much you can do with NDI and it all is done on a local area network. So what's a local area network? It's a connection of multiple computers together, all connected over ethernet to a network switch and it has to be a gigabit network switch, okay? A 10 is not gonna do us. It just doesn't have an, enough um, oomph to really get it going. Now, so many wireless, so, much, so many live streaming software platforms already support NDI, which is so great. We've got vMix, we've got Wirecast, we've got Livestream, we've got NewTek, we've got VLC, and we've got OBS. We've got PTZ Optics cameras. Connecting all of these together are gonna open up so many, so many doors you would be surprised. So 10100, it could support one NDI stream, but essentially it would just crash your network. So that's not gonna work. On a gigabit network switch, we can almost do 10 NDI streams. It depends on your setup because uh, NDI HX versus NDI are a little different. And we'll talk a little bit about that, but essentially a gigabit network switch could, maybe it can really only support about five to six NDI sources, because NDI really is going at about 150 megabits per second nowadays. Now, NDI HX is different, so it depends on what we're talking about. But essentially, I wanna talk to you guys about a couple really cool things that you can do with OBS now. This is the number one thing that I think OBS users are gonna wanna start doing right away. So one OBS system, right, one OBS encoder, can live stream to one destination, maybe YouTube, maybe Facebook. But if we set up our OBS with NDI input and output, that's the important part. So we can bring NDI video into our OBS production, which I'll show you before the end of this video. We can also send NDI out of our, and our OBS production. Now, if we do that, we can have, let's go full screen with this one. We can have one OBS system, okay, streaming to YouTube, and then another computer on our local area network taking that same stream and streaming it to Facebook. If we've only got, let's say, 10 megabits of upload speed, we talked about in this course, you only wanna use 50% of your total upload speed to save some headroom for fluctuation in your network, uh, we could potentially do maybe like a three megabit stream to YouTube and a 1.5 megabit stream to Facebook totaling 4.5, okay? So think about that. Now we can stream to YouTube and Facebook at the same time with two different encoders without overloading a single encoder. And um, it's all done over the local area network. So that's one major thing that you can do. 
But the other things that you can do, now this is going to get a little bit more advanced. It might be a little bit mind-boggling if you're just getting into NDI, but I want to show a little bit of the power here. Let's say you've got your video production system. So we've got our live streaming OBS system over here. It's connected via NDI to another laptop. Now this laptop is just outputting HDMI to a projector. So let's say that you've got a projector, but it's it's not right next to your live streaming system. It's all the way across your church at the other side of your church. And you know, you have networking in place, you have a network, but you don't want to run a hundred foot HDMI cable from your video production system all the way over here. There's also new devices out there. This one's called a Pizzazz NDI to HDMI. This over your local area network, you know, which could be thousands of feet, can receive your, H your NDI source and output HDMI so that you can have a monitor. Maybe your church has an overflow room or something of that nature. So it's supported by Game Show, Livestream Studio, OBS, TriCluster, VidBlaster, Wirecast, XSplit. And there are ways to also pump the output of your OBS system back into Skype, uh, Hangouts, GoToMeeting, WebEx, and Zoom. Skype actually supports NDI directly. So traditionally, we would run all of these SDI cables directly everywhere. Now everything can go to your router. Of course, it would need to really be a gigabit router. And all your sources are available to all the other sources on your network. We don't have to worry about traditional setups. Now, one of the things I wanted to mention too is that with the PTZ Optics NDI cameras now, they support multicast. And that means if you have a multicast enabled network, which we'll have to talk about in another video, um, you could actually send the camera to multiple streaming systems or multiple OBS systems at the same time without stacking up bandwidth on your network. So uh, a couple of the tools that we're going to re uh, review in this course is first of all, NDI is uh, actually supported by Adobe Creative Cloud. So you can go directly from your OBS system right into Premiere, right into After Effects, right? So there's a lot of great tools there. The NDI Telestrator, which we'll go about in more detail soon, um, allows you to just telestrate directly into OBS, which is really cool. I want to show that off. Uh, NDI Video Monitor, which is a great little tool. This one here uh, is probably going to be one of the coolest ones for you guys. If you want to set up any screen in your, in your home, right? You can set up an entire IPTV network where multiple screens are showing whatever you're pumping into or out of OBS via NDI. There's also an ISO quarter, which is pretty cool. Now you can take all of your different NDI sources on your network, whether they be cameras like this or just outputs of OBS and set up a dedicated machine to record every single um, input there, every single NDI. And then NDI transmits a cool one that you guys might want to look into. Uh, that one allows you to virtualize an NDI source and make it available via USB as if it was a webcam, a USB driver. I believe it's for Windows. It might be available now for Mac and bring it right into Skype or GoToMeeting or WebEx. Now, I think that pretty much covers what I wanted to talk about as far as um, you know how this stuff works because I didn't want to go too down into the weeds. I want to mention that if you want to get this plugin, you go to Open Broadcaster, go into the forum and search for OBS-NDI. A gentleman by the handle of Palicus actually has released this and you can simply download it and follow the instructions and in getting it into your um, OBS system, which I have already done. So I quickly want to show you how easy it is to use in OBS. So first of all, OBS or NDI inputs. Okay. So let's add an NDI input. So when we click the plus button, we will now see the NDI source. Right? So we can bring in any NDI source that's available on our local area network. I highly suggest that your computer be plugged into hardwired Ethernet, not trying to do it over Wi-Fi. Now, I have a ton of NDI sources, which is great. I've got the, actually, here's the Telestrator here. This is one I'd really love to show off. Uh, but I've also got like a ton of these. In fact, here's our hallway system. I'm pretty sure that, that will work. Let me pull in the hallway here. This is kind of funny. This is literally the view of my hallway. We use this quite a bit because as we're transitioning from our main studio here into our podcasting studio, our producer, Mike, can switch to that camera and show us walking kind of in between. So it's just another computer on our network 
with a webcam connected to it that we can now pull in that video source from. So the, the ways that you can use this are pretty incredible. Let's add our Telestrator. Just to give you one more example. Boom. Now you notice there, I didn't really talk about this too much, that we do have the ability to, so there's the Telestrator here, boom, right into our OBS system. Um, you notice that when you add an NDI source, the first thing that's really great about it, and the cool thing is it's serverless too. It's completely serverless. You don't need a server, and it's, it, all these are being auto-discovered auto here. We've got some cameras. We've got NDI sources coming off of our pr production system here. And when you click that, you can uh, click low bandwidth mode, and that will reduce the quality. But if you're having issues getting the bandwidth on your local area network, then uh, you can click that. I'm not having any issues because we have a gigabit network switch. There's another camera there that we can pull in. So we can, I can pull in, I have access to 10 cameras now, and literally my computer has no capture card at all. It's low latency, it's high quality, and you're gonna really be blown away by what you, how much money you can save by not spending money on capture cards, what you can physically do with your local area network. So here's the couple things that you have to know about NDI. One is you need a gigabit network switch, okay? There's some other details that I'm gonna link below to use some of the more advanced uh, settings. You are gonna need MDNS enabled, IGMP snooping. You're going to wanna disable jumbo frames. There's some technical things with your network setup that you're gonna to wanna to look into. I'll link all of that below. And then if you want to leverage multicast, that's a whole nother beast that we're gonna take, uh, we're gonna get in our OBS course available on Udemy. So, and they'll probably post it on YouTube as well. We're gonna get there as well. So there's some technical things, but even if you're a beginner, check your network switch, check to see if it's gigabit. If it is, go ahead and download the free NDI tools and give it a shot. And I'm pretty sure you're gonna find that you can now do so many new things with your OBS system. Next video, we're gonna talk about the NDI Telestrator, how to use that, because that is a great little tool. Got some tips there to get started with that. We'll also talk about how to set up multiple NDI systems being used together so you can have like two different producers. And then we'll look at a couple other things like using an NDI camera. So stay tuned. Don't forget to like this video and uh, we'll see you guys on the next one.